Okay, Monica Farrell, thank you, Kim, for asking about Jesus. I've been wanting an in-depth explanation from Jason. Now, I have videos, Monica. I do have, I have, do have videos about Jesus. I tell you what, I did not go in depth in this video. I sanitized it. Because I can go in depth. If that's what y'all want me to do. I can pull out my notes and we can do a live session just on Jesus. As long as nobody ever asks me questions or take me in other directions, we can do that. I'm, uh, it's not all bad. I mean, just because I don't believe the man ever you know, walked does not mean that I don't find value in the message of Jesus. You have to understand, the creator is outside the simulation. He didn't construct this. This was a this was a, a modification of a real reality. It is a construct by the Demiurge. It's an experiment. Evidently, there was a challenge somewhere in the realms of the divine, and that challenge was allowed. And we're living in it right now. I believe humans are the architects of the of the simulacrum. I believe that. I believe humans are the ones that built all this. I believe that something else changed it and trapped humans in here into an, in a loop. Some of y'all call it mud floods and resets and Phoenix phenomenon. All that. It's a loop. It doesn't matter how that loop manifests because a computer program can make something happen at certain intervals all the time and change the perimeters of the phenomena. So you would think it's something else when it's all part of the same phenomena. Now, this is what I believe. I also believe there's a, there, that we have entered a state of entropy. The simulacrum is falling apart. Events are not making sense like they used to make sense. Even the physics protocols are a weather phenomena. So many things are just really unraveling. And I believe like the first, the first reality tunnel collapse will be 2040, and the second one 2046, and then 2070, and then 2106 is the 6,000th year. Was, was the world created 6,000 years ago? Hell no. I don't believe any of that. That's an old Christian misinterpretation from older documents. There was a very definitive timeline begun 6,000 years ago. It was a new heavens and new earth. Because the old heavens and new earth under the Adamu had completely been wiped out by the phoenix. He had to start again. This is why the first chapter of Genesis isn't a creation story at all. It's two different creation stories that say totally opposite things. Go read Genesis. The very beginning of Genesis is not a single creation story. And every biblical scholar can tell you that. There are two creation stories. There are two pre-flood genealogies. And they're different. Some of them have crossover names, but they're different genealogies, and there's for a reason for that. Many of the Old Testament stories, they're bifurcated. There are two different versions of the same events, and they often have totally different conclusions all throughout the Old Testament. But we can get into that later. We can do it, we can do a Jesus one. It's not all it's not all bad. I believe I believe that the Creator communicates to us in parables, in imagery, in things that are unreal in this world, but in the spiritual realm take on new meanings when we entertain them. The gospel is fantastic. There has never been written a more spiritually powerful collection of parables and teachings as what you find in the New Testament. But the older versions of the same story, the Gospel of Marcion predating anything, it's the reason why the church fathers never mention these. It's the reason why the Apostle Paul, all the letters of the Apostle Paul, he doesn't mention a single miracle of Jesus. Did you know that? In all the, all the letters of the Apostle Paul in the New Testament, not one reference can be found to Mary and Joseph. Nowhere. Paul, it's, almost, it's almost like the Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, didn't even know Jesus. But I'm going to tell you what he knew. The Apostle Paul, he knew Christ. And he knew Christ risen, and he understood that the Christos was a belief in the resurrection and the collapse of this evil world, which he mentions over and over, because he mentions the God of this world. And he even makes the distinction that it's not the Creator. Paul knew. Paul was a student of the Gnosis. That's why his writings are so fundamentally different than what you find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We can go into depth on this top topic. I'm not anti-Christian. I just I can add more information than most people readily know about what happened. No, Jesus wasn't really there, never man. There wasn't Pontius Pilate never never executing. There was never a cruci crucifixion. Those are the old pagan elements that were reintroduced into a new story. And they're over and over. There's so many gods from, from the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, all the way to the 19th century BC that all had a life just like Jesus in the New Testament. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
but the gospel of Markion is just Jesus doing teachings, saying the most spiritually profound things, and having a bunch of arguments with the Jews. That's all the gospel of Markion was. Somebody later wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John using the gospel of Markion before they trashed it. And in that new version, they added all the pagan sun god elements, the virgin birth, all these things they added. It's just it's ridiculous. But we can go into depth. We can do it because Jesus doesn't have to be, the Christ does not have to be real as far as somebody who is physically here in this world to be meaningful to us at all. So let's let's move on. Let's move around. Some of y'all don't want to hear that. So, but for those you do, we need to do a video on it. South, South.